killed anybody that didn't deserve it. Five long years he wore this watch. This watch. In one place he knew he could hide something. This watch was your birthright. I could have used a little more cowbell. Be dead. Five long years he wore this watch. Up his ass. I gotta have more cowbell. This watch. Be dead. Five long years he wore this watch. Up his ass. His ass. Be your son. Your son, the cowboy. Your son, that snatched my narcotics. Your son, that whore, I failed it out of there. Your son, that ain't any kind of fun. No, no. I just said whatever I want. Those guys are dead. I just said whatever I want. I want monkeys. People seem to enjoy it. I make up the skits and bits right there. Intuitive improvisation. I just say whatever I want. Intuitive improvisation. It's the secret of genius. I just say whatever I want. People seem to enjoy it. You tell them what I say. Whoa! This watch was your birthright. No, no. This watch up his ass. It's uncomfortable hunting that up my ass two years. I want you to know what it's like to live that way. Five long years of what this watch. This watch. You gotta be fucking kidding. This watch. You clear with me. You understand? His ass. From here on, nothing goes down unless I'm involved. No blackjack, no dope deals, no nothing. I want in. One time, bad lips improv. I free associate and make up the skits and bits right there. You clear with me? You understand? I hid this uncomfortable hunger man up my ass two years. But you can't run, ain't you? Oh, little man. Never come back again. Jack, no dog pills, no nothing. I want him. It's my turn. I put my pants on, just like the rest of you, one leg at a time. Up his ass. Except, once my pants are on, I make gold records. Up his ass. His ass. His watch. I want monkeys. This watch. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Monkeys. This watch. With your birthright. I want monkeys. You'd be damned. Monkeys. His ass. I could have used a little more cowbell. I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. Whatever I want. I just say whatever I want. People seem to enjoy it. Your son. Okay, but he is. Your son. All the angels in heaven have never seen evil so singularly personified as you did in the face of the man who killed you. Your son. Your son. Your fuck. Your fuck. Your intuitive apologization. It's the secret of your Your son. His ass. Your 
Hello, how is everybody tonight? Am I coming through loud and clear? Let me see here. here. Yep, I sure am. How is everybody tonight? Happy Sunday. <clears throat> Hope everybody's having a lovely Sunday. Let me see who I got with me here so far. I have got uh, DJ Donnelly, Usu, RJ Skarinki. Been a crappy and rainy day here. Can't wait for your stream. Oh, cool, RJ. It's been uh, it's been kind of the same day here in here in Kentucky too. What's up, Saturn Video? Geriatric Geek, how you doing, Bill? Grave Dank, how's it going, Grave Dank? CJM, movie fan, what's up? Adam McKinney. Sam Thomason, rock music forever, 90, future dead camper. Uh, Return of the Disc, how are you? <clears throat> uh, Pumpkin J, what's up, Pumpkin J? We got Dream Emulator here, Sasha, Dave, Cody. A.K.A. Dude Who Loves Movies. Yeah, that's right. Uh, if you've not uh, dropped a like on the stream, please do so. We got Redbeard here. How's it going, Redbeard? We got Dude. We got Joe Reese. We got Swaggy. What's going on, Swaggy? Hope you're doing good. It's Gustavo. Ryan O'Leary. How's it going, Ryan? <clears throat> Joe Boo. How you doing, Joe Boo? Entertainment Wizard. Archie Bunka, 
We have Archie Bunka in the house. How are you doing? Uh, Andy Breckenridge, what's up? Chris Sweet, hello. Illfusion, Art, Dylan, Barney Loves Beer, Distorted Vision, uh, DJ Steve Mayers, Ross Jordan. <clears throat> Hope everybody's having a good Sunday so far. Ah, Hor Orman. Thank you for the $2 super chat. That's very kind of you, sir. <clears throat> Hill FFR. Bud Bad Bud <laughs> Badden, sir. Thank you for that, sir. Ah, so tonight we're going to be taking a look at Collider's 25 best slasher movies of all time. That is quite a, um, quite a statement. They're going to tell us what the 25 greatest slashers of all time, uh, are. I am, I'm not that familiar with Collider. I don't know how reliable they are. So, um, I, I, eh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens here momentarily. We'll, we'll get into that here very shortly, but uh, how's everybody's Sunday been so far? <clears throat> There's Christian berserker. Great movie. Great movie. Scream 2022 is going to be number one. I don't, I kind of doubt that, but you know, I don't know. I don't know. I've not taken a peek at the list. I've not cheated. This is going to be my first time looking at it. So, um, I don't know what to expect. Always expect the unexpected. That's what I always say. Love the fog shirt. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, this is um, Gutter Garbs. This is one of their newer shirts. I didn't already own a, a fog shirt, and I loved the design here with, uh, yeah, awesome. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. So, had to add it to the collection. Looking forward to the new Exorcist, Piz. I'm cautiously optimistic. Actually, no, I'm not looking forward to the new Exorcist at all. And um, I actually shared... Let me go look it up here. Um, I shared a post on my Facebook page from William Peter Blatty's son. Let me bring it up here. Hold on. So um, somebody asked him if he had any involvement in the upcoming exorcist movie. Now this is, this is interesting. We should, let's take a look at this really quick. Um, Cause I think this might be, uh, this might be interesting. Well, it, it is interesting. There's no might about it. So, let me get this situated and this will get me actually ready for when we get to the list. So here we go. Okay. Actually, let me put myself over here so you can see. So there is what, um, Mr. Blatty, Michael Blatty, of course, um, William Peter Blatty wrote the novel as well as the screenplay, I think for the exorcist. And of course, um, he wrote the novel Legion, which was he adapted himself into Exorcist three and directed. But uh, so somebody asked. Oh, you're so cool, Bruce. Ah, Alex. I can't stand it. Thank you for the five dollar super chat, sir. I appreciate that. Very kind of you. Let me get to your message here momentarily. Um, so yeah, somebody asked him if he was involved in the new Exorcist movie, and he said no. My dad sold the rights to any prequel or sequel to The Exorcist to Morgan Creek Productions, 
um, which produced Exorcist 3, yada, yada, yada. Morgan Creek sold those rights to Universal recently for $400 million. So I, I don't think uh, that was made uh, public not long ago, that um, Universal bought the rights to The Exorcist for $400 million. That's crazy. Um, Ellen Burstyn is back, of course, but we all know that they just paid her a ton of money. Um, the storyline, <laughs> 50 years after the events depicted in the exorcist, the son of one of Chris McNeil's employees in the 1970s discovers that his young daughter is missing after an extensive search. He finds her in the woods near their home, possessed by a devil. Even worse, it turns out that there are many other children in the woods who are also possessed. Uncertain of how to proceed, he contacts Regan McNeil's mom to ask her what she recommends he should do. Hmm, I wonder what comes next. It's also called The Exorcist Believer. And uh, they recently showed some footage uh, at a Las Vegas convention. The, fo the footage centers on two missing children and their respective families' initial attempts to find them. Both are found and think they have been gone three hours, but it's really been three days. Cue the various possession symptoms, including floating, convulsions, and one of them waltzing into a church, screaming the body and the blood while covered in blood. Cue an elderly Bernstein uh, being recruited due to her previous experiences with the reveal that this demon is the same one as before. We get a slew of violent, bloody imagery with a reveal that both girls have hearts beating in sync. Spooky. So that's the plot breakdown of The Exorcist Believer, as told by William Peter Blatty's son, Michael. Sounds pretty awesome. No? Uh, Alex, again, thank you for the $5 super chat. Appreciate that. Audrey and I anticipate all has been well with you, germs and the family. Always nice to join your live streams and view your previous videos. Oh, thank you, man. I hope you and Audrey are doing well also. Appreciate that. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the plot for, uh, for the exorcist believer and, uh, a breakdown of the footage that was shown in, uh, in Vegas at some kind of convention in Vegas. So sounds, uh, Pretty great. Hey, Scratch Burno. What's up, Cliff? Pieces better be on the list or it's invalid. I, again, I've not taken a look at the list beforehand, but I'm going to doubt that there's, I'm going to doubt that Pieces is on. You, know, I, you never know. You never know. <clears throat> sounds like, sounds Sounds kind of like Blair Witch. Hmm? <clears throat> and Alex, thank you for being a channel member for six months. Very kind of you. I never watched the Exorcist TV series, so I can't really speak on it. Feels good to see you. Looking forward to the list. I haven't peaked yet either. Hoping Friday the 13th takes the crown, says the bearded sloth. I'm sure Fr Friday the 13th's got to be on there. They call me Reggie the Reckless. I mean, it's got to be on there, right? It's got to be on there. But anyway, without further ado, we've got 43 likes. Can we get 50 on the stream before we dive into the list? Can we get 50? By the way, if you're somebody who, if, if you're the kind of person who just likes to kind of watch the stream and not participate in the chat, say hello. Let us know you're watching or let me know you're watching. And if you see a name in the chat who you don't recognize or who may be new, welcome them. Say hello. Be kind. Be welcoming. Oh, 56 likes. Thank you all very much. All right. Cool. Uh, 
the new Exorcist film sounds like a lot of thrown up pea soup to me. It does. It does. All right. So without further ado, let's dive into this list from Collider. What's up, Amir? How are you doing? What's up, Supreme Slice? Supreme Slice. Nice. Get your hands dirty. I like that. Um, Joe Boo. Thank you for being a Twitch subscriber for five months. I appreciate that. Very kind of you, sir. Or madam. I don't, I don't know. Uh, there's Briley in the chat. What's up, Briley? Basti L from Germany. What's up? How you doing? Uh, Death Rattle says, hello. I don't like to participate, but I'm saying hello. LOL. Well, thank you for saying hello, Death Rattle. I'm glad you, uh, glad you're here. Robert Jones says, hi, hey, Piz, don't normal speak, but always like. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Robert. Thank you for saying hello. Uh, Linda Blair is going to be in the movie to some extent, I do believe. Yes. Uh, Derek Smith from Louisville, Kentucky. What's up, man? How's everything going up in Louisville? <laughs> gloom gloom bloom says just like my buddy jeremy i am only here for the killing nice glitter master of a arrakis what's up hello casket vomit 666 now that is a name how are you doing all right so here we go let's dive into this list from collider um i'm eager to see What is going to be on their list? Well, if I could click on this, that would help. All right, here we go. 25 best slashers, slasher movies of all time, ranked from classics like Peeping Tom and Psycho to Game Changer Scream. This is Collider's ranking of the greatest slasher movies ever made. All right, here we go. Uh, this was published April 23rd, 2023. So it is very, it's very fresh. Very, very, I, I am scared by this photo though, because that is Jason and Freddy from Freddy versus Jason. So hopefully um, if Freddy versus Jason's on the list, I'm just going to bail regardless of what rank it is. But all right, here we go. Let's scroll down slowly. Horror is a broad canvas that covers many unique subgenres from zombie movies to haunted house flicks. None of them are intertwined with the genre, however, as the slasher movie. Some of horror's biggest movies are slashers with a subgenre birthing some of the most recognizable characters in cinema. Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, and Michael Myers have all transcended the medium to become essential parts of popular culture. Oh, there's a bit of a spoiler. Michael Piatowski, thank you for the $5 Australian. Appreciate that. Thank you. Oh. Oh, you're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> Nico, thank you for the $10 super chat. I appreciate that very much. Thank you both. Very, very kind of you. So we've already had a little bit of a spoiler at number 25. Let's just scroll on down to it. Friday the 13th, the final chapter is at number 25. Wow. Okay. Whew. Okay. Seen by many as the peak of the franchise, Friday the 13th, the final chapter follows another group of teenagers as they make the questionable decision of spending the weekend at Camp Crystal Lake. As the Jarvis siblings notice their new neighbors being carved up, they put a plan into motion to save the day. Um, do they? Do they? Do they put a plan? Well, uh, okay. Hmm. Oh, has this person even seen the movie? Okay. Anyway. 25 is Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Now, to me, and I've said this before, I think the final chapter is like the perfect slasher movie. It has all the elements. It has all the ingredients. 
that make a slasher movie uh, special. They have it has all the elements and ingredients that I look for in a slasher movie. So I uh, I don't know. That's uh, that's interesting. Let me see what everybody's saying here in the chat real quick. Uh, Nico says, hey, Piz and pals, welcome to all new chatters. Here goes. Oh, that's very kind of you, Nico. And Michael says, after David Gordon Green's Halloween trilogy, why would anyone in their right mind let him write? Oh, what happened there? Uh, Where did that go? Why would anyone in their right mind let him write and direct an exorcist movie? Um, yeah. Yeah. My sentiments. Exactly. All right. So, um, at 25, we've got, (sighs) Friday, the 13th, the final chapter. I, you know, it it would be much higher up on my list, put it that way, much higher up on my list, but at least it's on the list, I guess. So, um, let's proceed with caution. Number 24. uh, Oh, we got a trailer here. Okay. Uh, the final chapter sees Jason in full swing as he delivers some of Friday the third, Friday, the 13th's best kills, such as Jimmy's run in with a corkscrew. It offers up everything one could want from an 80 slasher movie, a savage killer, a cast of funny and likable victims and plenty of the red stuff. I agree with, I agree with that. 24 is scream Two. scream Two is 24 scream. Two is a better slasher than Friday. The 13th, the final chapter. According to Collider. Whew. All right. Picking up two years after the first movie, Scream 2 sees heroine Sydney Prescott trying to put that film's massacre behind her as she attends college. Soon enough, someone else has donned the ghost face mask and begun their own killing spree, causing Sydney to suspect her new group of friends as she survives to fight as she as she fights to survive once more now the 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 opening of scream 2 in the theater is i think is really good and there's there's a lot to like about scream 2 from my from what i recollect that last half hour 40 minutes though painful 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 um mm, but scream 2 at number 24 um okay i mean hmm all right. What do you all think about Scream 2 at number 24? Uh, Scream 2 should not be on the list. Pizzo's going to need a drink. I may need, I'm, it's, it's shaping up. I, I'm, I, I'm going to need a drink here soon. Yes, I do believe. Um, this list ain't no count. <laughs> uh it's interesting already. It's it's an interesting list already, I got to say. Okay. Whew. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let me settle here. Let me settle here. All right. <sighs> so what else does it say about Scream 2? Retaining the meta aspect that made the original so, pop- so popular, Scream 2 shifts its gaze to sequels, laying down the rules of second entries while creating some of its own, despite having to follow a slasher movie that was praised for its originality. Scream 2 never feels like a retread and has a great time lampooning slasher sequels while creating one of the best sequels in horror. Is Scream 2 one of the best sequels in horror? All right. All right. So Scream 2 is at number 24 on the list. All right. Let's uh, take a deep breath and uh, let's scroll down to 23 X. Okay. So we've got a, we've, okay. 
X, um, I liked, I liked X a lot. I think it's too, I don't know. It's too early. I think to put X on any kind of top slasher movie list of all time, but, um, you know, okay. I'm not that, um, I'm not that mad about it. Ty West tribute to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre sees the cast and crew of an adult movie travel to remote to a remote Texas farmhouse to film their latest project. The filmmakers are soon screaming from more than just pleasure as the elderly owners begin killing their guests, turning the porno into a snuff film. Okay. I, you know, I don't, to me, it's still too early. It's still too early. From its 1970s backdrop to its Texas setting, X feels like a long-lost Texas Chainsaw movie. West creates his own identity, however, thanks to his unique killers and a great cast, including Mia Goth, who pulls double duty as hero and villain. A prequel named Pearl was released soon after, while the sequel Maxine is currently in production. So thoughts on X being at number 23. Is it too soon for X? I liked Pearl better than X, says Kevin. X is a slash. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, X is a slasher. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, okay. I love X, but I don't know that it belongs on the list. Same here. Same here. Rotten Apple says X was garbage. Scream 2 won't even be in the top 25 Scream films in a, in a few years. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's a funny one. That's a funny one, Kentucky Cantator. Oh my god. Uh... Oh Lord. X should be twenty five, too soon for X. Yeah, uh yeah, it's too soon. Too soon for X, I think. I'm I'm not mad. I'm not mad at it, but it, it, I don't know. It's just too soon. It's just too soon. Anyway, X is number 23 on Collider's list of best slasher movies of all time. All time. Let's move on. You're next at number 22. Wow. Okay. What have I got near me? Oh, God. I saw somebody in the chat earlier say that they were drinking Dr. McGillicuddy's grape. I didn't. Dr. McGillicuddy makes a grape flavor? I've never seen that. I do have some Dr. McGillicuddy apple pie, but it's it's not cold. But I'm going to need a drink anyway, because this, I, I'm, it's going to be a long night. It's going to be a long night. All right, so here we go. Dr. McGillicuddy, apple pie, down the chute. Cheers. Thank you all for hanging out with me tonight. Oh. Oh. All right, you're next at number 22. Proving that nothing is scarier than dinner with your extended family, your next sees a family gathering interrupted by a trio of masked killers. What the later rivals do not expect, however, is for the new son's girlfriend, Aaron, to be a trained survivalist as she turns the tables on the killers. All right, so let me, uh, I want to do something really quick here. Hold on. So what is... uh, I was not a big fan of your next... Um, when it first came out and I've not seen it since. So, um, are there any fans of your next in the, in the chats? Um, Wild Grape is heavenly. Okay, I've got to look for Wild Grape Dr. McGillicuddy because I've never I've never even seen that. But that sounds so 
good. That sounds so freaking good. Uh, I still haven't seen your next. Your next is trash. I liked your next quite a bit, but admit it has no place on this list. <laughs> Winnie the Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Huddy, number one. <sighs> uh, <sighs> I don't know. Maybe I need to go back and watch your next, but like, I don't know when I saw it in the theater, it, it, it didn't, I, I don't know. I, I didn't like it, but, uh, or well, I have to go back and watch my review. I know my review was very mixed, but, um, I'll have to go back and watch it. I don't know. I, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is the, this is the top 25 slashers of all time, by the way, of all time. Hmm. All right. All right. Let's go back to the list here. Uh, double feature podcast is we are big fans of your next. I would say Aaron is one of our favorite final girls. Good time. This movie. Ah, Parker Allen, thank you for the four ninety nine. I appreciate that very much. Hello, Mr. Piz. Hello, Mr. Parker. I hope you're doing well tonight. Uh, it's solid, but not list worthy in my opinion. Okay, I'm gonna have to go. I, I may go back and rewatch it at some point. Let's. That's the wrong screen. Uh, here we go. All right. Let's go back to the list. You're next. Okay. You know, all right. It's number 22 of Collider's top 25 slashers of all time. Described as a slasher take on Home Alone, your next is a blast as it pivots from standard home invasion movie to something far more creative. Erin is one of the best modern final girls as she kicks all kinds of ass while the wonderful v v Vincent is joined by a nice cast of indie horror veterans that include Barbara Crampton and A.J. Bowen. All right. All righty, you're next. Happy Death Day at number 21. Um, I loved Happy Death Day, but <sighs> I, 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 college student tree, Jessica Roth is, is, is the having the worst day ever. Her dad is hounding her. The guy she ghosted is stalking her. And to top it all off, to top what they're looking at the. Nobody even double checked this before they posted it. There's like all sorts of. Well, anyway, Happy Death Day's number twenty one of the top twenty five slashers of all time. Again, I love the movie, but I. Hmm. Happy Death... Oh, okay, hold on. I, there was a bit of a spoiler. Happy Death Day was a breath of fresh air at release, providing genuine thrills and laughs at a time when the horror genre was taking itself too seriously. Roth is a revelation as Tree, showcasing remarkable character development as she goes from mean girl to caring hero that one cannot help but root for as she endures constant death. Thoughts on Happy Death Day as the number 21 best slasher of all time. This list is hurting my horror soul. <laughs> uh, shameful list already. Time for another shot. <sighs> We're getting close. We are definitely getting close to another shot. That is for sure. Um, hmm. I've actually not seen uh, Happy Death Day 2. I've actually not seen Happy Death Day 2. And no, I, I cannot take a shot every time I disagree with one of these rankings or I'll be I'll be drunk before we I'll be wasted before we get out of before we get to 15. All right, so Happy Death Day is the 20, the 21st best slasher movie of all time according to Collider. Uh, 
All right, moving right along. Number 20 is Final Destination. <laughs> oh, you're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> I can't stand it. Ah, uh, Nico, thank you for the $5. Keep it together, Piz. Have a shot and brace for the rest. <sighs> yeah, I, I'm going to need a few to get through this. Um, hey, there's Taco Bell Lugosi. What's up, man? Thank you. Thank you, Nico. So final destination, uh, at number 20. Um, I, I mean, who doesn't love final destination? Um, okay. After his traumatic premonition of a plane crash comes true, high schooler, Alex and the classmates who were kicked off the plane with him believe they have cheated death. They have merely delayed the inevitable. However, as the grim reaper comes back to kill them in a series of highly creative freak accidents. Who, who else here got to see final destination when it first came out in the theaters? Cause I did. And I, I remember it being a pretty fun experience watching it in the theaters. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> Is so so here's okay so the 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 um the argument in the chat is that it, Final Destination is not a slasher. Um, uh, you know I'll, I'll meet it halfway. It it's 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 kind of a slasher. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think we've, I mean, I, whoever, whoever created this list, I think their definition of what a slasher is, is a pretty broad definition. So I'm less upset about final destination being on this list as I am like, uh, your next or, um, or even happy, happy death day. Really? I'm less upset about final destination, but should it be on this list? No, it, it shouldn't. It really shouldn't. Uh, it's structured like, a, <laughs> it's structured like one, but so is Willy Wonka. That's a good point, Richard. That's a good point. I saw the first three final destinations in theater. I saw the first two in the theater. And then I did, I've not seen any of the other ones in the theater. I actually think I prefer Final Destination 2 to the first one. Honestly. That opening on the road with all that to me is, that was, that was pretty intense watching that for the first time. Still is really. I mean, that's a really good, that's a really good sequence. All right, Final Destination is number 20 of the 25 greatest slashers of all time. While Final Destination does not seem like a slasher movie at first, it fits all the trademarks of the genre. Cast of attractive teenagers waiting to be offed, check. Gruesome death scenes that will live rent-free in your head, check. Iconic, unstoppable villain that you can build a franchise around, check, even if you cannot see them. One of the most creative movie, creative slasher movies out there. All righty. <laughs> All righty. So this is uh, this is an interesting <laughs> this is an interesting list. Oh God, what's up, mid level media? How you doing, Ken? Final Destination Three is your favorite. Okay. Oh my goodness gracious. All right. Let's, um, all right, let's move on the, the number 20, the 20th greatest slasher of all time. According to Collider, what could be at number 19? Let's see. My bloody Valentine. Okay. All right. All right. I like it. I like it. All right. Hey, my bloody Valentine's on the list. Good, good. 
Whew. All right. My Bloody Valentine has made the list. Providing a way for single horror fans to enjoy themselves on Valentine's Day, My Bloody Valentine sees a group of dumb teenagers. Were they teenagers? They seem to be more like young adults to me than teenagers. Uh, d- a group of dumb teenagers decide heading down. This is another, but nobody proofread this before they posted it. Sees a group of dumb teenagers decide heading down into a mine shaft will be a romantic way to spend the evening. Rather than finding love, they find a killer in a mining costume who chases them through the labyrinth with a pickaxe. It's not a mining costume. It's not a costume. Often considered one of the most underrated slasher movies of the 80s golden era, My Bloody Valentine deserves a place alongside the greats of that decade. Yes, it does. While it was neutered at release due to having its gorier moments censored, My Bloody Valentine strikes gold thanks to its claustrophobic setting and heart-stealing villain. I agree. I agree. All right, so we've got some love for My Bloody Valentine. I like that. It's okay. I'm, I'm, it's, it's 19 out of 25. You know, not a bad, not a bad placement for My Bloody Valentine, I think. Not bad placement at all. What do you guys think? Bill says My Bloody Valentine is top 10. Yeah. I mean, yeah. On my list, it would be. My Bloody Valentine remake deserves a spot over some of these films. Hmm? <clears throat> <laughs> At least it made it. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. It's okay. Number 19, My Bloody Valentine. A little bit of faith has been restored in this list. Just a little bit of faith. Let's see what's at number 18. Candyman. Only number 18. Now, some people... Okay, so we're going to have another argument here, I'm sure. Is Candyman a slasher movie? Because some people don't consider Candyman a slasher. I, uh, the first argument here should be, is Candyman a slasher? Is Candyman a slasher? Put a Y or an N in the chat. Y for yes, N for no. Is Candyman a slasher? Let's take a quick poll here. And then we'll talk about the positioning. All right. So Ken says it's a slasher. DJ says no. Candyman isn't a slasher. Yes. And the placement is fine. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 I don't consider it a slasher, but whatever. Somebody put E. I don't know what that means. Uh, no, yes, and no. Jeez. No, yes, yes, and no. <laughs> Candyman is folk folk horror, not slasher. Very good point, Nico. Very good point. If Elm Street is, then Candyman is. That's a whole other argument we could get into. All right, so some so it, it seems kind of split down the middle. A lot of yeses, lots of noes. Actually, I'd say there's probably more yeses than noes. Uh, yeah, more yeses than noes, but there's still a considerable 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 amount of noes. So whether you think it's a slasher or not, um, Candyman's on the list at number eighteen. I, I you know. If you do consider Candyman a slasher, it certainly deserves a spot on this list. Um, it would be lower on the list for me personally, but it's on the list. When graduate student Helen learns of an urban legend surrounding a hooked killer known as the Candyman, she vent- ventures into the disadvantaged neighborhood he is said to haunt. Discovering that the boogeyman is more than a myth, Helen soon finds herself framed for Candyman's murders as she struggles to prove his existence. Helen. Helen. Be my victim. Uh, Alongside... 
want to scroll down here without giving away what's next. Okay. Uh, alongside Hellraiser Candyman is horror master Clive Barker's most famous work. Tony Todd is unforgettable as the Candyman, and he creates one of horror's most iconic killers. Rather than just relying on gore, Candyman is a chilling tale thanks to its haunting atmosphere, and you will have and haunting atmosphere and will have you avoiding mirrors for a while. Okay. Um, I, I'm fine with Candyman being on the list as a slasher. When I did my slasher list, I think I left Candyman. Did I leave, did I leave, did I put Candyman on or leave it off? I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, but a little bit more faith is restored in this list. Um, again, though, 18, it would be on down the list for me, but it's on the list. So that's a, that's a good thing. I think. All right. Uh, uh, more of a slasher than final destination. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. I agree. Okay. Let's move on to number 17 blood and black lace from Mario Bava. Now we're going to get into the whole slasher giallo, uh, argument. A giallo is not a slasher and a slasher is not a giallo. So, To me, Blood and Black Lace wouldn't be on the list. It would if I did like a top twenty-five Giallo list, Blood and Black Lace would definitely be on there. But a Giallo is a Giallo and a slasher is a slasher. With the exception of Bava's Bay of Blood, which is which is both. It's really both. So Blood and black. Oh, so, so <sighs> hey, there's Garrett in the chat. What's up, Garrett? Uh, so far, this list has been a little wild. I've only had to take one shot, though. But we've had several arguments. And um, we're having another argument now over Giallo versus Slasher. But, okay. Anyway, as far as Giallos are concerned, Blood and Black Lace is a is a damn good one. Uh, when a Roman fashion house begins to see its models being murdered by a masked man with a metal claw, a police investigator is called in to find the culprit. As he begins his investigation, more models are brutally slain in this classic murder mystery that is one of the first examples of Giallo. Exactly. Giallo. Not slasher. A movie's legacy can be seen by its influence on the medium and legendary directors Martin Scorsese and Pedro Almodovar, Almodovar have directly referenced Blood and Black Lace in their own work. Despite being over six decades old, Blood and Black Lace still holds up as one of the original slasher movies. No, it is not. Again, it's not a slasher movie. It's a giallo. I had to take four hits of acid, says Rotten Apples, or Rotten Apple. Four hits, wow. Yes, exactly, Nico, exactly, exactly. Um, I, you know, uh, all right. So, uh, I, I mean, I think it's cool that uh, Mario Bava got um, some love on this list, Although it, sh- it really should have been a Bay of Blood and not Blood and Black Lace. But I, I'm not that mad at it, even though it's not a slasher. I'm not that mad at it. By the way, if you've not seen Blood and Black Lace, you should. You should. Uh, all right, number 17. Blood and Black Lace. Let's move on. Number Intruder. Wow, I did not expect to see Intruder on this list. Okay. 
All right. All right. Uh, hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm cool with intruder being on this list and number 16. That's not a bad spot for it either. I don't think showcasing the worst thing, showcasing that worse things than Karen stock the aisles of stores. Intruder follows the night crew of a supermarket as they are killed off by an unseen assailant with reinforcements, not arriving until morning. The surviving workers try to escape the depressing reality of their low paying job being the death of them. Thoughts on intruder and its placement on this list. Hey, that's a legit pick. I agree. I agree. Getting whiplash from this list. Uh, Scott Spiegel. That's right. Intruder is good. Really like intruder intruder. Fun time. Yes. Yes. Uh, So yeah, Intruder is a really fun um, slasher. If you've not seen it, you definitely should. It's uh, it's 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 one of a kind. Of course, that is uh, Sam Raimi. They're pictured. Um, really fun slasher. Really fun slasher. And uh, not un unlike I don't want to say unlike any other slasher you've ever seen. But I'd say it's pretty darn close to being unlike any other slasher you've ever seen. So definitely worth checking out if you've never seen Intruder. Very happy to see Intruder make this list. I am. I'm very happy. I think the placement's just fine at number 16. So <clears throat> not bad. Not bad. Let's see. What else does it say about intruder here? Intruder is notable for the involvement of evil dead legends, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell who feature in a supporting who feature in a supporting role and cameo respectively, never reaching the mainstream heights of its contemporaries. Intruder is a cult classic. Thanks to its unique setting and gruesome death scenes, which are some of the best kills in the horror genre. So yeah, definitely not mad at intruder making the list. So I don't know. I, I'm my, my faith is, um, my faith is, my faith in this list is, is it, it's rebuilding a little bit. It's rebuilding. What's up slash your home video. How you doing, Chris? Hope you're doing well. All right, so Intruder is the number 16 out of is number 16 out of the 25 best slasher movies of all time according to Collider. Let's move on, number 15, what could it be? Sleepaway Camp. All right, so okay. All right. I'm glad that Sleepaway Camp is on this list, of course. For me, it'd be a little bit lower, but 15 is fine, I think. Um, again, more faith coming back for the movie, more f or for the list. More faith. I'm feeling more faith. <clears throat> uh, thoughts on Sleepaway Camp? Anybody unhappy with Sleepaway Camp making the list? It's placement. After watching her father and brother die in a traumatic boating accident, young Angela Baker is sent to summer camp with her protective cousin, Ricky. Bullies become the least of Angela's worries as a brutal murderer begins killing the guests and crew of the camp, setting the stage for one of the most shocking endings in horror. <clears throat> so what are we thinking? Sleepaway Camp. I'm happy with it. I prefer to, but it's fine. Too low for me personally, but I love Sleepaway Camp. Sleepaway Camp is garbage. Right? What? Bruh. Damn. Damn. What's up, PlayStation 9? How you doing? <clears throat> Hope you're doing well. All 
All right. So, wow. If you've not dropped a like on the stream, please do so. I'd appreciate that. Thank you all for 94 likes so far. Uh, happy on the list. Love Sleepaway Camp. It belongs on here. Quintessential. Uh, Bismo, thank you for the $5 super chat, sir. I appreciate that. This list is incredible. Bad. <laughs> Good times, Piss. Well, we're getting, uh, I think we're getting into the nitty gritty here. Uh, there will be eight great picks and two outrageous in the top 10. Write that down. Eh. Sleepway camp would make my top 10. One of the best endings deserves higher. Sleepway camp is easily top five. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it'd be close for me. Definitely. What's up, Twisted Trucker? How are you doing? As an Italian-American, it's nice to have a sister on there. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get back to the list here. I'm, I'm, I'm Okay, I'm, you know, for every one that, that's kind of bothered me there's been at least a pick that i've been like yes yes we're 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 on the same page so sleepaway camp number 15 i like that the most iconic summer camp slasher movie after friday the 13th sleepaway camp remains a favorite of 80s horror fans angela is one of the most memorable final girls in horror as her unique journey unfolds and the kills are bound to make even the most hardened film goer squirm so would you say that Sleepaway Camp is the most iconic summer camp slasher after Friday the 13th? That's a pretty bold statement. There's a lot of uh, summer camp slashers out there. Would you say it is the most iconic after Friday the 13th? And with that statement, surely Friday the 13th is going to be on this list the only question is where? These lists always just have that vibe of the writer Googled slashers. <laughs> uh, that is fair. Nope, not for me. Hi, P.S. How did you? Hey, Phil, what's up, man? How you doing? <clears throat> Um, I, I, if, if Madman is on the list, I'd be shocked. The burning, I, I, you know, I mean, everybody knows how much I love the burning. I don't know if the burning is on the list. I'll be super happy, but I'm, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. So. Number 15, Sleepaway Camp. All right. We've had some really good picks and we've had some pretty questionable picks, but we've had some, we've had some good ones. I'm, I, I'm, I'm focusing on the good so far. So let's see what's at number 14. Let's hope the good continues here. Number 14 is The Burning. Okay. <laughs> All right. You know, I'm gonna uh, okay. I'm I'm gonna do a celebratory shot. I I did kind of a sad, depressed, bewildered shot earlier. Now it's time for a happy celebratory shot. Cheers. Mm. The burning, number fourteen. Out of the top 25 slashers of all time, I'm surprised it's on the list, but I'm very, very happy that it's on the list. Very, very happy that it's on the list. After Cropsey, the caretaker of a youth summer camp, is left horribly burnt after a prank gone wrong, he swears bloody revenge on the camp's guests. When a new wave of kids and teens arrive for a summer of fun, they instead find themselves stalked and killed by the deranged murderer and his gardening shears. <sighs> Number 
redemption shot. <laughs> mm, that was a little surprising for me. Yes, that was a little surprising. Yes, it was. <sighs> the top 10 will be interesting. The top 10 will be interesting. That's right. Uh, Reggie. Yes. Um, Dawn of the discs announced today that uh, scream factory will be rolling out a 4k of the burning here in the very near future. Oh, and as, and as a matter of fact, um, I'll wait and see if this, I'll wait and see if it's on the list. This movie has to be on the list and I'll, I'll bring up this, this release. Um, if it's on the list, but back to the burning number 14, very happy to see the burning on the list. Another overlooked slasher movie from the 1980s. The burning has gained a new appreciation from horror fans in the decades since its release. While some deride it as being a Friday, the 13th knockoff, the burning carves its own identity as it features early appearances from Jason Alexander and Fisher Stevens and an unforgettable massacre aboard a raft. Yes. Mm. Oh, God, it's such a good movie. Mm. Such a good movie. Mm. So happy to see the burning on the list. What's up, Big Crack Rock? How you doing, sir? There's Gozer the Gozeri. Do I like Dark I love Dark City. I freaking love Dark City. Great, great movie. <clears throat> yes the burning is so effing good i know oh so good oh by the way garrett i saw well of course i saw your video today of that teen wolf um still book um uh what's a future pack and i had to go buy it <laughs> i had to go find my own and and uh and buy it because like you, if it's Teen Wolf related, I just have to own it. So, okay. So happy, happy, happy. Joy, joy, joy. As Jeremy would say, the burning is number 14 on the list. Happy to see that. All right. Moving on to lucky number 13. And it, it better not be Friday the 13th. If they put Friday the 13th at number 13, let's just see. O Opera. Another giallo. Okay. I, I, I love opera, but again, this is a giallo, not a slasher. I'm okay with it. I'm all right. I, whatever, whatever, whatever. I do love opera though. If you've not seen Dario Argento's opera, you should. Uh, when young understudy Betty suddenly receives a lead role in a production of Macbeth, her joy is short-lived as a deranged stalker begins killing everyone close to her. To make matters worse, the killer wants Betty to witness every murder and ties her up at every crime scene with needles in her eyes to force her to watch. That's what I'm talking about. <sighs> Yes, opera is opera's here. Uh, Piz is <laughs> no, no, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's it shouldn't be on the list, but I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm fine with it. Uh, you know, it shouldn't be on the list. It's a giallo, but whatever. I'm fine with it. Um, which kind of which I mean, th th opera is not Argento's best movie. So are we going to have like more Argento on the list? Because I mean, Tenebrae is a better Giallo, uh, Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Well, uh, uh, I'm just wondering if there's going to be more Argento on this list. 
Uh, let's see here. Directed by Dario Argento, opera is a disturbing take on the slasher genre and a masterpiece from the legendary giallo filmmaker. Using its opera house setting to perfection, opera allows Argento to showcase his eye for striking visuals while finding the startling beauty in death. <clears throat> okay, opera is number 13. Um... Uh, you know what? I, I agree. I don't know if opera's top five Argento. Well, it might be for me, but it would be like number five. Dracula 3D better be higher. Whew. Okay. Yeah, Deep Red. So if, if we're going to go, if we're going to add more Argento to this list, I mean, definitely Deep Red's going to be on there. Um, Tenebrae's going to be on there. Uh, maybe even Phenomena, although I, I like Opera more than Phenomena. I don't know. Well, let's just, let's tread lightly. Let's tread lightly onward to number 12. <clears throat> A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors. Okay. All right. So this is my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Um, you know what? I, I'm glad it's on the list. I'm glad it's on the list. Because it is my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street. So I'm glad that it's on the list. Moving from the suburbs to a psychiatric hospital, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 follows a group of teenagers locked in the facility as they become Freddy Krueger's latest victims. As no one believes that the boogeyman stalks their dreams, young Kristen attempts to save her friends and herself. Thoughts on Dream Warriors making the list at number 12. Oop. Oh, crap. There was a little bit of a spoiler. The best sequel in the slasher genre, A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, deserves a place alongside the iconic original. The best sequel in the slasher genre. Whoa. Dream Warriors is the best sequel in the slasher genre. Ooh, that is a bold statement. Uh, Nico, oh, it's your favorite Elm Street movie. Okay, all right, all right. Yours too, Sasha. Coming in at number five, Hereditary. <laughs> I'm a dream master kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our favorites as well. If Halloween Resurrection isn't number one, I riot the neighborhood. It's funny. Ah, oh, man. I, you know, I don't know. The best sequel in the slasher genre. Man, I, ooh. You know, I would say it's right up there, actually. I'd say it's right up there. I mean, hmm. Yeah, really, it's right up there for me. Uh, channel one, four, three. Thank you for the, uh, the bits. I appreciate that. The 45 bits. Thank you. So let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, dream warriors here because, um, we've brought up a couple of interesting, uh, a couple of interesting points with dream warriors. So is Dream Warriors one of the best slasher sequels ever made? And is Dream Warriors better than the original Nightmare? So for me, when it comes to slasher sequels, I mean, of course, the final chapter is right up there. Halloween 2, the original Halloween 2 is way up there as well. Dream Warriors, 
definitely up there also. <sighs> is it the best though? Child's Play 2 is up there also. Yeah, Child's Play 2 for sure. Uh, I mean, Hellraiser 2. <sighs> mm. Well, uh, uh, if you if you consider it, well, Hellraiser's not really a slasher. But just as far as sequels are concerned, definitely Hellraiser 2. Psycho 2, definitely way up there on the list also. Whether or not you consider Psycho a slasher or not, Psycho 2 is definitely a slasher. Um, mm. I wouldn't say it's the best sequel. I'd call the best sequel films that are better than the original. Okay. So Supreme slash, you think it's better than the original. Okay. No love for Freddy's dead. <laughs> uh, not from me, not from me now from Jeremy. Yes. You'd find all kinds of love for, uh, Freddie's dead from Jeremy. He was just, uh, w when we did our lunch with Jeremy stream the other day, somebody asked him what his favorite nightmare on Elm street was. And he said, <laughs> Freddie's dead. So <clears throat> thoughts on psycho two. psycho two is awesome. Psycho two is a psycho two. In my opinion is right up there with psycho. As far as I'm concerned. Great, great sequel. <clears throat> Chainsaw 2. Yeah, Chainsaw 2 would be up there for sure. And, yeah, and Nightmare on, I, I love Nightmare on Elm Street 2. 2. I mean, I love that movie to death. All right, so let's go back to the list. We've had some interesting... Uh, Interesting discussion. All right. So number 12 of Collider's 25 best slasher movies of all time. And I'm around Elm Street, three dream warriors. I'm glad it's on the list. All right, let's move on to number 11. Tenebrae. <laughs> another Giallo, another Argento. So, uh, so here's okay. How many more Argento movies are oh, we're getting into the top 10 here? There's got to be at least one more Argento, at least one more. I'm thinking it's got to be Deep Red, which again, Giallo, not Slasher, but you know, I. I don't know. I, I'm just I'm just not that mad at it but i mean clear it's just it's it's not a slasher it's not a slasher when an american author travels to rome to promote his latest book he becomes involved in the investigation of a serial killer seemingly obsessed with the author and his work the killer uses his writings as inspiration for how he murders his victims casting suspicion on the writer himself <clears throat> Tenebrae is a quintessential giallo. Yes, I agree. A quintessential giallo as it combines beautiful scenic cinematography with gruesome and confronting visuals. While Argento's work in the genre is prolific, Tenebrae sees the legendary director exploring themes such as voyeurism, trauma, and the fetishism of death deeper than he ever did in his other work. The fetishism of death. Collider, Collider really likes their Italian movies. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> if the Prowler isn't in the top 10, then I'm going to be upset. I, I would be surprised if the Prowler is in the top 10. Very surprised. I don't see it happening. <clears throat> I don't see it happening. Tenebrae. Okay. All right. Interesting. Number, <laughs> number 11 of the top 25 slashers of all time, according to Collider 
is another giallo from <laughs> Dario Argento, Tenebrae. Great movie. If you've not seen Tenebrae, I highly recommend it. We're getting into the top 10 here, folks. <clears throat> let me take a, let me take a drink. Here. Let me take a breath. Whew. This has been quite a, quite a ride so far. <clears throat> so before we move on, what's everybody think of the list so far? What's everybody's thoughts on the list so far? And thank you all for 108 likes on the stream. If you've not dropped a like on the stream, please do so. Neutral. Rather neutral, says, says the PlayStation 9. Okay. Meh. It's decent. Bit mixed. Sucks. <laughs> I think Collider is trying to play it cool. Like, hey, look. Look, I know Argento, LOL. Uh... The list is crap, not the most accurate. The list is 50-50. It's a collider list, mostly feels clueless. <coughs> I wasn't drinking until you started this list. It's funny. <coughs> Somebody should be fired for making it. Ooh, Bearded Sloth, uh, if they insist on Giallo films, then I want to see Stage Fright on the list. I think I think it's a long shot for Stage Fright, but I think that's a long shot. Oh, goodness. This list is I don't know. Well, we are moving in to the top ten. All right, here we go. Top 10 slasher movies of all time, according to Collider. Here we go. At number 10, Child's Play. <clears throat> okay. All right. Not, I like this. I like this, the pick, and I like the, 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 the ranking. Number 10. Very respectable. Very respectable. When a scuffle with police inside a toy store sees prolific serial killer Charles Lee Ray shot dead, he uses his dying words to enact a spell that places his soul inside a good guy doll. When the doll finds its way into the hands of young Andy Barclay, Chucky plots to steal the boy's body and kill anyone who dares to try and stop him. <clears throat> Leaning into its silly premise by never taking itself too seriously, Child's Play is one of the most inventive slasher movies of the 80s. As the diminutive killer takes down targets much larger than him, Chucky is one of the most iconic horror villains with Dorf's portrayal striking the perfect balance between funny and scary. <clears throat> I can dig Child's Play at 10, a little low. Cool, I'd pick two, but I love the original. Nice, I can live with that. Ten is good on Child's Play. Good choice. <clears throat> Great pick. Hey, what's up, horror gang? Seed of Chucky is the best. Wow. <clears throat> so child's play at number 10 I, I, hey I, i'm good with that i'm i'm good with i'm a-okay a-okay with that a-okay number 10 out of the top 25 slashers of all time according to collider is child's play i'm good with that let's move on number nine Friday the 13th is number nine.
The original bloodbath at Camp Crystal Lake sees a group of young camp counselors arrive to prepare the area for the inbound campers. Content to... Sp oh. I can't, I can't read. <clears throat> Content to spend their downtime partying and lounging by the lake, the teens soon find themselves fighting for their lives as an unseen killer begins picking them off one by one. <clears throat> I, even if you don't think Friday the 13th is the best in the Friday the 13th series, number nine, I, 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 uh, I, uh, Ah, uh, Nico, thank you for the $5, sir. In memory of Giovanni Lamberto Redice, City of the Living Dead, Cannibal Apocalypse, yes, and many other great movies. Yes, the great, the great <clears throat> Giovanni Lamberto Radice is no longer with us. It's a shame, but he left behind quite a legacy of dying horribly <laughs> in movies, so... While some will argue that the original Friday the 13th is not the best in the series with the final chapter and Jason Lives having their fans, the first movie set the template for the franchise and many other slasher movies that followed. It also harbors a mystery element that the sequels lack as they shift focus to a Jason who demolishes teens with ease. All righty. <clears throat> Uh, I'm without words. The most underrated movie ever. That's, you know what? You might be right. Uh, <laughs> stay cool. Pins keep it together. All right. You know, okay. All right. I mean, it, it was, it was a given that Friday the 13th was going to be on the list. It should be higher, in my opinion. It, it should be at least, at least top five. So, okay. All right. So, I mean, I think the question at this point is, where's Not Real Elm Street going to be? Where's Halloween going to be? Um, and where's Deep Red, <laughs> <where's Deep> Red going to be? Um, okay. All right. All right. Oh, you're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> I can't stand it. Uh, Franco, thank you for the six pin. What denomination is that? I'm not familiar with that one. Piz, after having Friday the 13th in this position of the ranking, one can only wonder what lies ahead. No, yes, one can only wonder. What lies ahead? I'm, um, <sighs> I'm curious. Peruvian soul. Oh, interesting. Well, I've never had a, a super chat in that denomination before, but thank you very much for that Franco. And yes, who knows? What will lie ahead? Where's Black Christmas going to be? That's a, you know, I mm, Black Christmas. That's okay. Black Christmas may be on the list. I don't know. Let's move on. Let's move on. Number nine. Friday the 13th. Okay, let's see. What is going to be number eight? Deep Red. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So I, th I think this is going to be the last Argento on the list. Hopefully I love Argento, but we've had three Argento giallos <laughs> on a slasher movie list. All right. <laughs> Number eight, deep red. Oh man. After musician Marcus witnesses a murder, he feels compelled to solve the case teaming up with reporter Gianna. 
The pair discover they are chasing a twisted serial killer who plays a child song to his victims before he slays them. As they get closer to uncovering the culprit, they risk becoming his next victims. <clears throat> Deep Red is a perfect example of Argento's trademark stylish camera work and disturbing violence, while also featuring a compelling story wrapped up in a twisty murder mystery. It is cited by many as being the ultimate Giallo movie <laughs> and is the perfect place for anyone looking to step in to the genre. <laughs> All righty. Uh, you should check out Deep Deep Red is great. Deep Red is awesome. I love Deep Red. Collider made this list just to mess with peace. <sighs> I'm starting to laugh too. If you're going to include Giallo's, at least branch out from Argento. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I, I love Deep Red. A Deep Red, Deep Red wasn't my first Argento. Opera was my first Argento, but I didn't know who who Argento was. So I, I I watched that movie, not really. I watched it understanding, like, hey, this isn't this is different than like Friday the Thirteenth. Um, but by the time I got around to watching Deep Red. I knew who Argento was. I think actually, I think I may have watched Suspiria. Yeah. I watched Suspiria, then deep red, then dove into all of Argento's other stuff. But I love deep red. Great movie. Awesome. Giallo. Beautiful, beautiful movie. Uh, incredible cinematography, some great kills, but again, it is a Giallo. But according to Collider, it is the number eight. It is number eight out of the top 25 slashers of all time. So we got Deep Red out of the way. I think that's, I think we're done with Argento. I hope we're done with Argento because surely they're not going to throw Suspiria on this list. Surely to God, they're not going to throw Suspiria on this list. But I think we're done with Argento. So where is Halloween going to drop? Where's Chainsaw going to drop? Where's Nightmare on Elm Street going to drop? Is Black Christmas going to make the list? That's four of the next seven. So what's going to be the other three is the question here. Are we talking about maybe there'll be another Bava movie thrown in there? Maybe, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's move on. Let's see what is at number seven. Peeping Tom. Peeping Tom. Now, I love Peeping Tom. This is a great movie. I've never considered it a slasher, though. It's, 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 a, it's a serial killer movie. It's, it's, it's... But... I, I'm glad it's on the list because people should see it. Um, it's a great movie. Personally, I don't consider it a slasher, but I'm okay with it being on the list. And at number seven, that's very respectable. What's everybody think of uh, Peeping Tom? Uh, no, New York Ripper. I thought I thought about New York Ripper, but there's no way it's going to be on the list. Original Psycho will probably be number one. Yeah, Psycho is going to be there somewhere. There's no doubt about it. Psycho will be there somewhere. Psycho. I I don't consider Psycho a slasher either. Or said bookends. Oh my god. It's a proto slasher. Okay. If you've not seen Peeping Tom, you should. 
Uh, Mark is an amateur filmmaker who spends his time stalking and filming women. When he gets them alone, he murders his prey, capturing their dying moments with his camera. When his new neighbor, Helen, takes an interest in the strange man, she finds herself drawn into his dark world. It's not just like you see in the image there. On his tripod, on one of the legs of his tripod is like a very, is like a spear. So what he does is he films his victims and their reaction to him creeping toward them slowly with the spear coming at them. And then, of course, the point where, you know, he does his thing. So this was such a shocking movie in its day that it pretty much ruined the career of its director, Michael Powell. That shock. This was this was 1960, by the way. All right. Peeping Tom is often referred to as the original slasher movie. And it originates several elements that would become trademarks of the genre, featuring a human killer who stalks his victims and Mark and Helen as the earliest example of a final girl. The slasher genre owes everything to Peeping Tom. That's another bold statement. The slasher genre owes everything to Peeping Tom. Wow. Bold statement. Very bold statement. Yes. Yeah, Sean, you're correct. If, if Peeping Tom is on this list, Psycho, Psycho, Psycho was going to be on the list regardless. I'm, I, I was I'm, I was pretty sure. But if Peeping Tom is on the list, Psycho is definitely going to be top at least three. Most likely one, but it's going to be at least top three. All right. Interesting. Interesting choice. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought, well, actually they mentioned peeping Tom at the very beginning (laughs) of, uh, of the article. So, but I forgot. (laughs) So, so peeping Tom was a surprise. Number seven on the list. Okay. Let's move on. Ooh, number six, black Christmas. All right. So black Christmas is number six. Okay, Black Christmas is number six. I'm cool. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. As their college campus empties out ahead of the Christmas break, the last few remaining members of a sorority house begin to receive threatening phone calls from a stranger. As the police try to discover who is responsible, the stalker creeps through the house and quietly murders the girls before slinking back into the shadows. Black Christmas has a unique legacy as being one of the most acclaimed slasher movies of all time, while also being one of the most underrated. Its low-key stock and slay story is still just as chilling almost 50 years later. While while its focus on young female victims targeted by a creepy man has become a trademark of the genre. Everybody okay with Black Christmas being, what was it, number six? Yeah, number six. Everybody okay with that? Uh, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Black Christmas will always be my number one. Scream in top five. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's right. We've not seen Scream yet. Oh, wow. Scream is going to be in the top five. Wow. Okay. Scream is going to be in the top five. Wow. And Scream is going to be higher ranked than Black Christmas. Hmm. Okay. All right. The question here, we're we're at the top five. We're at the top five. Let's take, let's take a moment here. And let's decompress for a moment before we dive into the top five, okay? All right. What's up, uh, the White Knight? It's Carl Hens. Hello, Carl Hens. How are you doing? Uh, Glitter Master of Arrakis. How are you doing? Oh, man. All right, let's... Let's decompress for a second here. Um, 
So we're at the top five. Okay. We know Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream, and God, I hope Texas, if Texas Chainsaw Massacre is not on this list, I'm going to, something bad's going to happen. So, okay, so that's four and Psycho. That's got to be the top five, right? That's got to be the top five. So, Psycho, Halloween, Chainsaw, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Scream. That's your top five. Now, the question is, how's that going to fall? You know what I mean? Oh, man. This top five could be really rough. This top five could be really rough. Thank you all for 124 likes on the stream. If you've not dropped a like, please do so. I'd appreciate that. Thanks to everybody who's watching over on Twitch as well. <clears throat> oh, man, I need a minute. <sighs> Maniac Driver number two. Oh, love that movie. <sighs> We've got Dave Parker in the chat. What's up, Dave? Hope you're doing well. This has been a this has been a wild one, man. I've it's been lots of ups and downs. Lots of ups and downs. What's up, Retro CAC? How you doing, Gibbs? Yeah, no, no Psycho Cop. I don't think Psycho Cop's going to be in the top five, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Ah, <sighs> thank you, Ross. Thank you. All right, let's get back to it. We're going into the top five. I think we all know what the top five are going to be. We just need to see how they're going to fall. So here we go. Number five, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So they're, they're going to sit here and tell me. They're going to sit here and tell me that Scream is better than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't, I, I don't think I can go on. I'm just gonna.
I can't do it. I can't go out like that. <sighs> All right. All right. All right, so number five <clears throat> is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <sighs> the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is still considered one of the scariest movies of all time, thanks in no small part to its suffocating, sun-drenched atmosphere while most horror movies take place in the dark. Texas Chainsaw instead finds the horror in daytime with the sight of Leatherface swinging his chainsaw in the Texas sun, one of the most iconic images in horror. Not as iconic as a guy in a white shirt with greasy long hair, though, right? Right? Yeah, that's more iconic. A guy in a white shirt with greasy greasy hair who looks like he's not bathed in months. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> All right. All right. Let's just move on. Number four. A Nightmare on Elm Street. So Scream is better than A Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Is it, did this come out on April Fool's Day? You know what Jeremy would say about this list? He'd go, it suck. That's what he'd say. That's what he'd say. All right. <sighs> Your reaction to each reveal is priceless. Oh, we're get I <sighs> oh, man. All right. So not real Elm Street, of course. Classic. I, I, it being number four on the list is definitely respectable, I think. So, all right. So let's think about this. All right. So we know Halloween, Psycho, and Scream are going to be in the top three. If Scream is not number three, there is no God. I don't care what you say. If Scream is not number three, there's just nothing. When you die, there's nothing. There's no justice in this world. There's no karma. We're all just leaves floating on a random gust of air, occasionally colliding into one another and more often than not being stepped on. That is, that's all life is. If Scream is number three on this list, that is all that life is. It's meaningless. It's a meaningless series of failures, heartbreaks, uh, crushing defeats, and inadequacies. That's it. That's it. If Scream is number three on this list, if Scream is not number three on this list, that is all life is. That's it. All right, so a definitive slasher movie of the 80s and Nightmare on Elm Street adds a clever twist on the slasher formula by having Freddy stalk his victim's dreams. As the teens cannot simply run away and will have to sleep eventually, Freddy remains a constant threat as he creeps closer and closer to his victims the longer 
they stay awake. All right, all right. What's going to be number three? It's got to be Scream. It's got, number three's got to be Scream. If they say Scream is better than Psycho and Halloween, I've already, I've already been clear about that. Okay. No. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. (laughs) But again, let me reiterate. Scream is better than A Nightmare on Elm Street, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Black Christmas, and a lot of others. Deep Red. Even though it's not a slasher, it's better than... uh, All right. All right. Scream is number three. All right. I'm good with that. I'm all right with that. Scream is number three. So we know what two and one are going to be. Scream is number three. All right. I, I do put I do put too much stock in these lists. I do. I put way too much stock in them. All right. <clears throat> All right. All right. So okay, Scream is number three. All right, cool. So we had two Scream mo- out of the top twenty-five slashers of all time. We had two Scream movies on the list. It's, and, and look, I like Scream. I like Scream a lot. I really do. I really, really do. But I think whoever made this list, they have to be about 20, 20. A decade after creating a horror legacy with the Nightmare on Elm Street, Wes Craven struck Slasher Gold again with this meta masterpiece, Scream self-awareness, Scream self-aware approach to the genre. One of the legion of fans and its legacy can be seen in the wave of Scream-like slashers that dominated the 90s. Yes, indeed. All right, so the question now, because we know Psycho and we know Halloween are going to be two, and we're going to be the next two. Is Halloween going to be one? Is Psycho going to be one? Is Halloween going to be two? Is Psycho going to be two? How, how are they going to fall here? I, I'm curious. Uh, all right, let's see. Let's see. Number two. Numero dos. Psycho. Psycho. Okay. All right. All right. You know, I... Okay. So we know number one... Let's just go ahead and skip forward. We know number one's going to be Halloween. Okay. Yeah. I I was... I was... Uh, yeah, I mean, I was kind of expect. I mean, it's... A, uh, Halloween, the number one slasher movie of all time. Now, Psycho, I, I I don't consider Psycho to be a slasher, but it's okay. I, I'm, I knew it was going to be high up on this list. Number two, it's fine. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine with that. Uh, and Halloween, number one. I mean, really, the question here is... Should Halloween be number one? Is it, it, is it the greatest slasher movie of all time? Rock music forever says Halloween is overrated. Uh, Garrett says he's cool with Halloween as number one. Uh, not upset with these top two. Halloween wins, Halloween number one all day. 
Psycho should be number one, says mid-level media. JT, it's your all-time favorite film. Okay. Yes, Halloween is number one. Okay. Way more deserving than Scream for sure. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, so there you go. Halloween is the number one greatest slasher movie of all time, according to Collider. Uh, let's go back up here to Psycho for a second. Alfred Hitchcock's best movie. Is Psycho Alfred Hitchcock's best movie? Psycho sees the master of suspense at the top of his game as he crafts a tail packed with shocking twists. It is more subdued than your average slasher movie as it spends more time developing its characters rather than killing them. Its influence on horror and cinema in general cannot be understated as it set many templates that many movies still follow while its iconic shower scene is one of the most recognized moments in film. You know, as much as, you know, and I agree, Psycho is a great film, but that shot for shot remake, much better, much better. With Vince Vaughn, much better. Uh, as, as for Halloween, the definitive slasher movie. Halloween is the most influential work in the genre. Wow. Is Halloween the most influential work in the genre? That's, ooh, that's a debate right there. While Peeping Tom and Black Christmas came before it, Halloween popularized the concept of a masked killer targeting teenagers and directly influenced the creation of other legendary slasher movies such as Friday the 13th and My Bloody Valentine. <sighs> I mean, this list was better than Shudder's top scariest movies list. I, I, I'm, I must have blocked that one out. I don't remember it. I don't remember it. Vertigo is my vote for his best, but Psycho changed the game. Vertigo is really good. The Birds is great, yeah. The Birds, Vertigo, um, Rear Window is great. Um... I mean, he directed a lot of great movies. I did a slasher movie list um, a few months ago. <clears throat> Please do a short of Jeremy's reaction to this list. <laughs> uh That's a, that, that's a good one, Dave. Yeah. That's a great topic for a discussion show. Most influential horror films. That's a, yeah, that's a good idea. <clears throat> it's a very good idea. <clears throat> oh, what a ride. This has been quite a list. We've had some uh, some 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 wild uh, entries in the list. We've had some a lot of non slasher uh, entries in the list. Um, whew, it's it's been a ride. I um, it's going to take me a couple of days to recover. From this list, um, oh man. So, what was everybody's thoughts on the list overall? Thumbs up, thumbs down, meh. My my rating would be kind of meh. There were some good picks on the list. I mean, I liked seeing movies like. Um, intruder getting some representation i liked seeing movies like peeping tom getting some recognition but um chainsaw at number five no no that's that's blasphemous um 
Scream in the top three is just blasphemy. I'm sorry. I'm, I know there's a lot of Scream fans out there. I love Scream too, but top three, I mean, oh, come on. Come on. Ugh. <sighs> Goodness gracious. But <clears throat> we survived. It wasn't that bad. There's been worse. There's been worst lists. Um, that one list I did last year, I don't remember which one it was. Because uh, I because I drank so much during it. They call me Reggie the Red. Oh, thank you, Future Dead Camper, for being a channel member for eight months. Appreciate that. We survived the list. We did. Yes, we did. We survived it. Um, whew, man. I'd like to see you do your own top or twenty zombie movies. Okay. <clears throat> that's okay. I may have to do that. Let me write that down here. Yeah, that'd be a fun list. That'd be a fun list. <sighs> but we survived it. I only drank about... Um, Half of this bottle. So, I mean, I'll, you know. I don't know. There were, uh, I'm okay. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. So, wow. Wow. What a list. <sighs> have you done a list of your favorite remakes? I have not, but I was thinking of doing a, a, uh, a Sunday night stream with some special guests in the near future where we talk about our favorite remakes. So, <clears throat> and, uh, the people that I would be, that I'd like to invite to that stream, uh, know a little bit about remakes because they made a very popular, uh, very profitable remake. I'll sleep well at least. <laughs> Oof, just about lost my voice. How bad do you think this rider strike hurts the business? Um, <coughs> are they striking or did they get, I, th I thought they, um, are they still striking or did they reach an agreement? <clears throat> Riders should be paid much more than what they are. And they should be given uh, far more on the back end. You, you, you don't have a movie without a rider and the riders are always the first people to be. It, it, it's like uh, studios and producers think they're all just kind of, you know, there's like no talent to it. So they treat the riders like crap. So riders deserve more. I, I think riders guild still in negotiations. Well, I hope they get, I hope they get everything they want. I certainly do. I think they deserve it. Any slashers that definitely have been on the list, but weren't that should have been on the list, but weren't, um, Ooh, um, I would have put silent night, deadly night on the list. I would have put, um, <clears> Hmm. <throat> <clears throat> Definitely Silent Night, Daily Night. I'd have to think about it a little bit more. But Silent Night, Daily Night, I think, should have been on the list. And, uh, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe Halloween 2. I think they could have taken off one of those, one of those giallos and put on Halloween 2. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, of course, is what I mean. Hmm. 
Blood Rage. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Blood Rage should have been on the list. <clears throat> uh, I love the Prowler. Um, if I did a top 25, the Prowler might be on there. I don't know. The Greasy Strangler. No, no. The Greasy Strangler would not have been on my list. If I, if I made a list of the most disgusting horror movies, the Greasy Strangler would be top. It'd be way up there. It'd be way up there. A pieces, of course. Yes. Pieces would probably be in the top five. So yeah. Thank you for doing the stream. Oh, well, thank you for tuning in swaggy. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm not a huge fan of House on Sorority Row. I always, I revisit that movie every few years because like I, I should like that movie, but I just never get into it. And thank you all for 142 likes on the stream. I appreciate that. If you've not dropped a like on the stream, please do so. Well, I guess we can call it a night. It's been an interesting, uh, it's been an interesting stream. I almost, uh, just quit it. I almost just backed out at one point, but I, I decided to power through it and, um, yeah. So, <laughs> oh goodness gracious. But, um, I am working on, I have reached out. To, I have, I have one guest who has agreed to do a bloodstream, but they want to do the bloodstream sometime after the summer, but they will be a very good bloodstream guest. Um, I'm working on a couple of, uh, Sunday night streams with some guests and some topics and I'll be announcing those all in the very near future. Um, I am going to be dropping a video very soon, a review of, um, vampires kiss, and I'm going to be giving away, uh, a Blu-ray of vampires kiss. So watching Renfield got me interested in revisiting Nick Cage's vampiric roots. And so I decided to revisit uh, Vampire's Kiss, and I'm going to give away a brand new Blu-ray of Vampire's Kiss. And I forgot to mention this. I couldn't resist, and I got my hands on the big second site, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 4K release. So I'm going to do a full review of it, um, talk about the movie, talk about the extras, talk about all the contents in the very near future. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And, uh, on top of that, I'm, I, I, I would like to do more lunch with Jeremy streams cause those are always very fun. And I think people really enjoy those or people seem to really enjoy those. So, um, plan on doing those more frequently with Jeremy. I know Jeremy enjoys them too. Unless you mention, Unless you bring up Fred Durst playing Freddy Krueger, then Jeremy's just like, I'm done. Because when, when, when that got brought up during our last stream on last Friday, he was done. That would, that was it. That was the end. You mentioned Fred Durst and Freddy Krueger and he was like, call it a day. I'm out of here. So nobody mentioned that during the next one. He did not appreciate that at all. Thanks, man. Was a lot of fun to watch. Oh, well, thanks for tuning in, Dave. Uh, thanks for the stream pits. Have a good one. Y'all too in chat. Yeah. Thank you, Sasha, for tuning in. Oh, by the way, we're keeping, I, I've, I've not, I, I've looked at, um, I've looked at three different dollar stores and I've been to Walmart a couple of different times looking for that new Mountain Dew flavor, but I can't find it. I've heard people say that it is available in Kroger. So I'm going to run by Kroger tomorrow and see if I can find a couple of bottles there for Jeremy not to do a review of that. So, 
But anywho, <clears throat> Jeremy had me at his review of Evil Dead Rise. <laughs> he likes the killing. When is Jeremy's birthday stream coming? Well, um, Jeremy's birthday is June 4th. So if anybody is interested in sending Jeremy a gift to unbox during Jeremy's birthday stream, if, if we do a birthday stream, uh, if we, I, uh, if anybody would like to send Jeremy a gift for, uh, to be unboxed during his birthday stream, get in touch with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, uh, just let me know. And, uh, yeah, we'll do a birthday stream. And uh, we'll we'll do some unboxings. There will not be any cake eaten during Jeremy's birthday stream, though. We tried that; it did not work out. He's vehemently anti-cake, though. But again, if you'd like to send Jeremy something for his birthday for to unbox during his birthday stream, just get in touch with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or uh, through my website pizzal.com, and uh, let me know. So his birthday is June 4th. I believe that's a Sunday. Let me double check here. Yes, that's a Sunday. So we'd probably do the stream. Uh, we, I don't know. We might do it on Sunday. I don't know. But yeah, just get in touch with me. How about a Freddy cake? No, no. Even with a Freddy cake, he wouldn't touch it. Wouldn't touch it. Now, if it was a donut, if it was like a, donut cake do they make donut cakes i don't think so if it was like a freddy krueger donut he would eat that he likes donuts he just doesn't like cake you know <sighs> always a great show piz had a blast thank you saturn how about pie no well pie Probably not, because it looks too much like cake. A cookie cake. Now, that that's an interesting... Maybe. He likes cookies. That's a maybe. That's a maybe. No, ice cream cake's out of the question, too. Out of the question. So. Nope. Well, folks, I'm going to call it a night there. Let me do some shout outs. Uh, thank you for tuning in over on Twitter. Cotton Eye Joe, the PlayStation 9. Uh, let's see who was uh, the White Knight. Uh, Channel 143. And Joe Boo. Thank you all for tuning in over on Twitch. <clears throat> let's see who's still with me over on YouTube. Well, actually, let's do some shout outs. Shout out to Hor Orman for the $2 Super Chat. Shout out to Alex Bacon for the $5 Super Chat. Shout out to Michael Piatowski for the $5 Australian. Shout out to Nico for the $10 and the $5. Shout out to Parker Allen for the $4.99. Shout out to Bismo for the $5. Shout out to Nico for the additional $5. Thank you. Shout out to Franco for the $6 pin denomination. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> and let's see who's still with me. We've got Archie Bunka. We got Nico, Sam Thomas, and Michael Sullivan, Geriatric Geek, Zombie 7979, uh, Valerie Renat Endicott, Smudge, Dave, Kevin Dudley, Barney Likes Beer, Future Dead Camper, Reggie 19, Riz Ami. Uh, Kevin Dudley, Michael Woodard, Grizzly Dipper, Harley Max, Red Beard, Mid-Level Media, Ill Fusion, Richard C., Grave Dank, Ross Jordan, Mad Bull, Supreme Slice, David Rimbert, Slasher Home Video, Chris, Horrid Films, Chris Sweet, Briley Van Dyke, Bill Nightbloom, uh, 
Dave Parker, Midnight Geek, Joe Reese, Cliff Booth. Yeah, thank you all for tuning in tonight. It was a lot of fun. Pumpkin J, thank you. Uh, yeah, tonight was a lot of fun. Hope everybody had uh, had a great time. If you've not dropped a like on the stream, please do so before you leave. But I uh, will see you again very, very soon. Take care. Have a great rest of your Sunday night. Have a great week ahead. And uh, take care. Be well. Peace. <laughs>